In this video, let's see on how can we get the user information within the Spring Boot application. In a sense, once the user is authenticated on the key cloak, if we want the user information of the logged in user within the Spring Boot application, how can we do that? For that, if you see in the security config Java, up until now what we have done is we have used the filter. In a sense, the authorization is done using add filter after method and this method doesn't have any connection within the spring boot application the security part to add the jwt information within the spring boot application what we need to do is if you recall in the part 7.2 of the playlist we have done the authentication process so we need to fetch some part of the authentication process code so that we can get the JWT token in this manner. If you remember the authentication process within the uh, Spring Boot application and not sending to the key cloak involved this part of the code as well as this part of the code. We do not need this part of the code. We just need this so that the JWT token will be initialized. And to get the JWT token initialized, we also needed the property called issuer URI. We need to add that as well. Once we add this part of the code, the JWT token will be initialized within the Spring Boot application. Now, if we want to access the JWT token or the access token, what we need to do is for any of the REST API which needs this, we need to add the authentication principle using the JWT object. If you see here, when you are trying to add the JWT and the authentication principle, you might get more than one import options and try to add these imports so that the application works. And once you add these authentication principles JWT, we can access the claim information using this JWT.getClaim. And if you see what I have used is I am using some constant. There is a constant defined within the key cloak representation. So this will have several properties. If you want to use these, you can use, or if you just want to use the string values, you can do that as well but when you have these constant values it's better to use and another uh, way is jwt provides direct access to some of the properties like get subject get id expires at these properties also can be accessed directly from the jwt token and another constant if you see this access token constant doesn't provide all the properties like issuer, subject, and other things. So the Spring Boot or the Spring Framework provides another constant called JWT claim names, and this has those properties. So this is like a combination of uh, uh, the constants from Keyclock as well as from the Spring application. Let's start the application and see if we get the information from the token as expected. Let me debug it. The application is started. We'll open the swagger. And since we changed in this API, in a sense, updating the price of an item, we'll use this login since Amar or the owner has the access to update the price we'll use amar thrice and item id is two let's give three four five execute and now if you see the name is amar the preferred name the id or the subject is this and issuer is our key clock issuer you can also check within the JSON web token here. Subject 
issuer and preferred name here you can choose any of the properties based on your requirement but in my understanding or view subject would be a better property since this is the primary key id of the logged in user within the key cloak database in a sense if you see the database the key cloak database and there is a table called user entity within this user entity for amar this is the primary key let me copy this and the subject has this value and if you remember for the crud operation implementation within the uh, spring boot application we have used the primary key id but it is up to you on which property or which field you need to add which can be done in this manner so that's it for this video thanks for watching